Hi everyone, welcome back to Rich Reviews. You join us queuing up to board the Euro Tunnel to begin our incredible Euro Tour. We've got an X12 in front, 458 in front of us, R458, we've got a GT3 behind us, and we've got a 488 Pista behind the GT3. So already we've got an incredible group of us that are boarding the Euro Tunnel. We're all grouped to head off at 6.50, so it's quite an early start. It was a two o'clock two o'clock leave for us which was uh, a bit of a nightmare but it is what it is a few moments later welcome to France So we're at the historical Reims circuit now. We've got a 488 Pista here in beautiful Grigio alloy. Next to that, we've got an 812 GTS in Rosso Fiorano. Of course, my 458 Spider, Rosso Corsa. Next to that, we've got 458 Spider in Giallo Modena. They're filming the Porsche Le Mans car. traveling to Bad Bad from Reims. When we park up in, in Bad Bad, we'll be there for the evening. So really today is just purely traveling. We left our place at 2 a.m. in the morning. Um, our destination was the Euro Tunnel, and we had to be there at the very latest at 5.50. We got there about 5.40, so that, that was no problem. Our 6.50 train across, um, or underneath the, the, the channel, and then took us into Calais. And then we've driven from Calais, quite a long stint, onto onto Reims. Then what we're doing then is driving on from Reims now to Baden-Baden which is where we're staying overnight and then tomorrow we'll be picking up the major driving roads which in effect are passes. Then we'll be driving straight on so we won't be staying there at Baden-Baden again we'll be driving straight on to Lake Bresensee where we're staying at a hotel called the Hotel Geisbach which is a really super cool hotel right on that lake. You'll catch us later on today when we arrive at Baden-Baden. Close out the first day of the video. We're just coming in to our hotel area in Baden-Baden. You can see the roads are quite aggressive and quite unique, very narrow. driving out now from a hotel in Baden-Baden. It's pretty early in the morning for us, so it's just gone half past seven, so 
Nice early morning start. We're gonna be doing some awesome driving. Today is the first driving of hitting the passes. So join us later on where we introduce the passes that we'll be kicking off with today. Today's driving is taking place in the Black Forest area and most of the main switchback driving or pass driving we're doing today is on the B500 um, which is what we've been driving now and it's incredible the switchbacks is it's just awesome and this is my first experience of driving like this and it's just incredible it's what these cars were designed for and to give you an idea of how we're pushing on going around the corners the temperature on my 458 the temperature on the front tires is now 49 slash 50 degrees so that's pushing on quite a bit. That's the hottest they've ever been, certainly when I've been driving them anyway. And these Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's are working out absolutely awesome. B500 for a while to get a coffee and some ice cream. So we're in the little town of Wolfack. This is absolutely stunning and they love the cars. I mean look, got my 458 parked on the side here. It's just gorgeous. It's a stunning place. So you come off these passes driving, you know, really, really intense driving. Uh, the temperatures on my front tyres are now 54, 55 degrees. So it's increasing, increasing as we do the switch back. I mean, what's not to like? We're about to get some ice cream here with the guys. Um, ice cream and a coffee and it's just bloody awesome if you've ever contemplated doing a driving tour like this um, just bloody do it I mean it just doesn't get any better
So we just crossed the border from Germany into Switzerland. So we're now in Switzerland. And pretty much when we cross the border, all they do is check for the vignette nothing else one of our guys didn't have a vignette so we had to wait on the other side but they just check the vignette as you go through yeah you've got it don't really give a damn so border control is, is pretty nice and easy um, or so it would seem anyway we certainly didn't have any issues but now we're traveling on to our guys back hotel at Lake Bresenzi so we reckon we'll be there in about two hours two and a half hours something like that I think we've got about 50 miles to go now so yeah we're just caught in the traffic now so it's just chill and travel on and we'll get there when we get there Just coming into Lake Bresenzi, which is where our hotel is called the Hotel Geisberg. Unfortunately, you know, we're on a great road at the moment, but the traffic's really bad and you just can't do anything about it, you just can't get past. But look at the scenery in the background, there's the lake now, there's Lake Bresenzi. Absolutely awesome. And these roads, look at this overhang, absolutely incredible. Just wish I could get past this bloody caravan. <laughs> Okay. I don't think much of the view from the balcony though. Look at this! Look at this bloody view! We've got our own waterfall. And around to the side, you can't see, but around to the side is Lake Bresenzi, or they call it Lake Brion for short. But it's just awesome, absolutely awesome. It's a fantastic hotel. So yes, unfortunately we're only staying here one night, but what a night to stay here. Absolutely fantastic. Now we're going on now to a place called Chirvana and it's near Lake Como but obviously we're picking up some fantastic driving routes on the way. So you join us later on as we drive out on the Grimsel and Furka passes later on today. <laughs>
we're filling up yet again. The intricacies of filling up the car when you're abroad, eh? There's loads of different types of fuel percentages of ethanol and, and unleaded. So you have to make sure you try and get at least 95 in the car. But we're averaging around 98, um, so sometimes 95, sometimes E10. So you've got 10% of ethanol. So, um, but in general, the fuel's really good over here. So yeah, it's just taking a lot of it because we're burning a lot of it off. Grimsall Pass. Look at it. You've got like a partly frozen lake here at the top at the top of the pass. This is the reward you get for reaching some of these passes at the top. Absolutely awesome. This is Furka Path. That's the roads we've just driven up, guys. Take a look at that. We're in t-shirts, snow all around us. That is just bloody incredible and more to come.
the Goffard Pass. It's another awesome pass. These roads just get better and better. Terrain. Um, I'm driving it very differently for the passes and for the different interconnecting roads. Now for the passes I'm using normal mode, I'm using normal sport mode and I'm using race mode but I'm using sport mode most of the time. It's only when I need aggressive gear changes and, um, and aggressive, get, uh, aggressive upshifts and aggressive downshifts on the gear changes that I put it into race mode. Um, everything happens quick more quickly in race mode. I'm using sport mode though for most of the time and obviously I've put it in manual mode as well so I've taken it out of auto. Now when I'm driving these bits on the dual carriageways um, or the interconnecting roads or when we're in, in the small towns or villages almost always I'm driving it auto or if we get into queued traffic then I put it into auto mode and I'll do that generally to take it easier because it's not, you know, it's not fun driving really. You, you, you know, the switchbacks are the fun driving on the passes. But also, it allows the car to cool down a bit, allows the engine to cool down a bit. And on the interconnecting roads, it's good to get some air flowing over the CCDs. Because if you've been braking quite hard on the pass, on the switchbacks on the passes, then you want to make sure that you're cooling your CCDs down in, in between sections. Because that's what causes a lot of wear on these carbon ceramics is not allowing them to cool down after you've um, been performing aggressive braking. So that's pretty much it, varying between sport mode and race mode, um, auto mode and manual mode, depending on which sections you're on, and letting the car cool down when you, when you, when you can, and also when we're stopping for coffees, etc. in villages, letting, lifting up the engine cover to let the engine cool down a bit more as well, because we're in 30 degrees temperature here, 25, 30 degrees temperature, so it's quite warm as it is. Also, I, I, I should say as well, I'm keeping an eye on the tyre temperatures. And we're hitting, you know, we're finding that the, the tyres are sticking really well from about 48 to 60 degrees. Um, and well, I mean, we haven't hit anything higher than about 62 degrees on the, tire, on the front tyre temperatures. So, when you get more temperature into the tyres is always good, especially into the steering tyres and the steering wheels. So that's pretty much it, guys. That's, for what it's worth, that's how I'm driving the car over here. And needless to say, the 458 is performing fantastically well. It's almost like the perfect car for this. Roof down, got all the power you could possibly need. The gear changes on the dual clutch are well fast enough, especially if you're in race mode. It's just an awesome car. And it's brilliant for this road trip. So all good so far. Fantastic driving and fantastic car and fantastic colleagues that we're with. So yeah, it's all good. And we'll give you an update later on um, with regards to how the car is going and if we know of any issues with it with the other guys' cars. But they're all Ferraris apart from one GT3 Porsche and GT3 Porsches are bulletproof anyway. So hopefully all will be good. No issues so far. To a parking area here just to take a break and the gentleman here's just shown us this stunning brand new ruf so it's a 993 base rough um just look what you get to see on the side of the road incredible in this enclosed trailer so somebody's taken <laughs> taken possession of this beautiful brand new rebuilt or restored 993 into a rough concept so we're now driving san bernardino pass so we're just coming up towards the top and you can see there's snow again and it's definitely getting chillier this is very aggressive, these turnings. It's a very narrow road. We're chasing the Giallo Modena 458 Spider in front of us. We're just coming to the peak of it now. Look across, look at that view across. Now we're 
just descending San Bernardino. So it's quite a quick, quite a quick pass, very narrow. Loads of concrete on the sides. The last thing you want to do is slide sideways into one of those concrete pillars. This is the Splugen Pass that we're on now. Now we've slowed down a bit because we're caught in traffic, which is a bizarre thing to say on such narrow roads and, and very rare pass. We can now uh, talk a bit, we can take our breath and talk a little bit. These switchbacks are super aggressive. Either way, you're gonna be on the other side of the road. With the lock of the 458, which isn't bad, but it isn't great, it isn't anywhere near as good as a GT3, for example, because you've got the rear wheel still on the GT3 991.1. You get, when you come up to the switchback, it's so aggressive, and of course it's going up, you're turning right on the knuckle of the joint and then swinging out. You've got to be so careful, it's such a tight turn as well, and you can't punch the throttle too early because you'll flick out and just have to look down the side here. I mean, this is not so high here, but it's a sheer drop. It's been a sheer drop. So you've got to be so careful. We're coming to the top of this pass now, but super aggressive, great fun. But uh, you've got to keep your wits about you. It's really aggressive driving. But uh, awesome roads, absolutely incredible. And the scenery of it's just outstanding. We just come into the peak here. So guys, we're now descending the Splugen Pass and the Porsche's feeling a bit out of it because we've now gained a few horsepower now that we're in Italy. Definitely starting to get better looks now that we're over in Italy. Not that we had any bad looks, but I believe that they really cheer you on with these with Ferraris. So I don't know how they'll welcome the GT3. I'm sure they love GT3s as well. So I'm just taking a bit of the mick out of it. But that GT3 is bloody awesome. And it's done exceptionally well. Coming up this pass, it was right up my backside because I, I couldn't turn sharp enough. The GT3's got rear wheel steering. Oh, that bike was on it. He had places to go. Look at these passes, look at these switchbacks. How sharp you've got to turn. And I'm almost in the gutter and I'm just about not hitting the sides. Bloody crazy. Splugen Pass. Done. Another one done. Another one ticked off. Another awesome pass. And the cars just get better and better. After we drove the Splugen Pass yesterday, we closed out by, by crossing the border into Italy at the end of the Splugen Pass. We then came across into Chiavenna. So we're in Chiavenna now, which is where we're parked up at the Hotel Comradi. So we've got our cars parked up here. Just show you the sort of parking spaces that we've got. That, just going to show you the sort of parking spaces we've got to deal with in Italy at these hotels. I mean, they love the cars, of course, but we've got our GT3, GT3 parked here, really tight in against the railings. We've got our 458 Spider, really tight against the railings as well, and it's quite a heavy slope here as well. We've got the 488 Pista on the right hand side here, squeezed in. And we've got 
another 458 Spider, the Jella Modern 458 Spider here, really squeezed into the side as well. And the 812 GTS had to get down this slope. Imagine what a nightmare that was. Thankfully, he had lift, but the real problem was the rear diffuser. That was the biggest problem to get that over this, this curved part as he, as he went down. But we, but we managed it, and the 812 is parked down the bottom in the, in the garage, so we'll have to get him out in a few minutes as well. That would be quite interesting. Morning everyone, welcome back to Rich Reviews. You join us on a beautiful bright morning in Chiavana. We're just leaving Chiavana in Italy near Lake Como and we're driving forwards now. Our end destination for today is, is Bormio in Italy but on the way we'll be hitting some fantastic Italian passes and we'll be talking you through and bringing you some awesome footage. Notwithstanding we're currently driving a 458 in Italy. It doesn't get any better than this guys. Join us now on Maloja Pass. We're caught in traffic a bit here, but these are really aggressive switchbacks again, so you couldn't go much faster on the corner turns. I mean, if you look at this angle that we're coming up here, we're actually, we're actually in first gear. It's really, really sharp, and you can feel the tail sort of snapping out. Um, we're around 52 degrees on the tire, so they're not cold, but they're not as hot as they have been. When we we're doing these switchbacks yesterday, we were on 62, 63 to 64 degrees tires. I mean, look at this, really aggressive switchbacks. Really, really steep. Really, really nasty stuff. <laughs> or great stuff, whichever way you look at it. You won't get an idea of this slope, but it's quite aggressive incline. Notwithstanding, if you get it wrong, you're into a cliff. Off a cliff. Or off a cliff, yeah, or off a cliff. So we just pulled up and we parked here right by Lake Silversea. Absolutely awesome. You'll hear some banging in the background because they're just setting up for some sort of event that's happening here. So we've passed Lake Maloja earlier and this is Lake Silversea. driving the pass above St. Moritz and being in the mountains area above St. Moritz you have a bit of a microclimate environment so we're now 
got a bit of rain because when you move between different areas because of the effect the mountains has and the in, enclosing the environment you have these microclimates so we have this um, quite warm environment quite warm temperature but rain at the moment So we've now come down one of the passes and we're in Davos. Now I've, driv I've driven in Davos before and I've skied in Davos before many years ago. So I know this place but not that well but I recognise it. I was here in winter though so it's a very cool little town and we're going to stop here, we're going to get a coffee and relax a bit because I think all our hearts are racing from that last pass we've done. Very aggressive and, and uh, very cool, awesome driving. And this is a beautiful place, it's red hot again now. So we've come from hailstone in, rain in microclimates down to red hot climate again here, rooftops down and stopping to get a coffee to relax. This is just a stunning place. Look at this clock tower. driving for 
today. We've come from Italy, from Switzerland, back to Italy again. So we were staying in Chiavana and now we've come to Bormio at the hotel La Grenzianala. You join us in the hills above Bormio in Italy, searching out our fuel station to fill up our tanks and then we'll be on to our first pass of the day where we'll take you along and you'll rejoin us on that first pass. in Lavinio, we've come through Lavinio again so we've had to track back from Bormio to head on on to Bois in France. So we're just tracking back in another tunnel guys. <laughs> got to be some of the most exhilarated driving I've ever had. All those tunnels and fast pace through the tunnels. Absolutely incredible. Some good flowing sections there as well. This just gets better and better. Absolutely amazing. 
just got you got to be careful you got to keep thinking all the time that this car's got to get me home and we did have a, did have a weird sound a weird piss, piss sort of sound not pissing sound a weird piss sound and we we stopped because we weren't too sure what it was it was the flipping water bottle we've got a big water bottle here because my son and i drink a lot of water and it's it gets pressurized as you as you go up into a higher elevations and it was leaking air <laughs> made us think shit what's gone wrong with the car anyway everything's all right and uh we've calmed down now we've come into another beautiful uh, i think another like lower end skiing type of um village or town so when we find out what the name is we got our signpost up there st moritz to the left we've already been to st moritz we're in switzerland at the moment and then we're heading on through to france to Bois. <laughs> So this is Floella Pass and we're just about to drive drive along and this pass is one we did yesterday we're now doing it in the other direction so it's going to be interesting I, I think this was a good one I mean all of them are good but um, in different variants of uh, difficulty really side of that pass now and we've hit one of their microclimates again so roof up thank god for the smart top because i was able to put the roof up while we were moving a little bit and uh, it's pouring down the rain now so i've got a manatee in wet mode at the moment because why not that's what it's designed for you can still drive a car fairly in a spirited fashion but it just means the traction control is going to be even more vigilant <laughs> So we're heading on to an, an historic automobile museum called Mulhouse and we're going to spend some time there, just a couple of hours, just having a look around and that's on our way to Buan. Um, we're going through also Liechtenstein and Zurich to get ourselves there. <laughs> We're at La Belle Epoque, which is the hotel we're staying at here. And we've driven around 360 miles now from Bormio today via Mulhouse, the Mulhouse Automo Automobile Museum, Historic Automobile Museum. So we want to stop in there on the way. So 360 odd miles today, so that's pretty knackering. Um, one pass we covered off today, and that was on the way back through Lavigno. So um, we've now arrived here. Another day closed out, another great day, awesome miles, even though my 458 spiders now um, is now just about to clock over 15,000 miles some some would say well I'm just going to devalue the car it's fantastic memory so you've got to look at it from that respect so today we're going to be driving from Juan in France onto Le Mans it's around 280 miles and it's about a four and a half hour journey. So it's gonna be quite a brutal drive. And we're gonna be taking in mostly motorways, so it's not gonna to be too many scenic bits of driving. So probably we're gonna, you'll catch us next at Le Mans. So we're all gonna be setting off in a minute. We're just finalizing packing our cars and we're gonna be heading off to Le Mans. That's the 812, you can hear fire up. Do you join us next, probably at Le Mans.
So just gonna talk you through how these toll booths work. So obviously the roads are told in effect as a way of paying tax for the usage of the road and it's based on the type of car you have and the type of road and how many miles you're doing on a road. We have an electronic um, tag here and the electronic tag is picked up by a scanner. You can see it's opened up the barrier and it's almost instant so that you can go through very, very quickly if you've got the automated chip system. We're pretty much through. This is one of, this is the pista that's in our group before a pista. Unfortunately, um, the 812 GTS always has problems. He has a handheld scanner for some reason. I don't quite understand what's going on there. Um, and the 458 will be through as well in a minute. And then what we do is we reconvene on the side and wait for everybody. So we go really slow on the motorway sections where they have these toll booths so that we all reconvene um, and catch up and then we carry on driving in a group. And the toll booths are about every 20 miles, 20, 30 miles, something like that. And that's not consistent, it's just an average that I've perceived that they, that they run at. And you can see that these French, we're in France at the moment by the way, and the French, French drive like absolute lunatics. They drive at each other. We've got some clown coming up behind us now thinking he wants a race. And they just bloody drive at you and all their cars are beaten to shit. And that's why, because they drive at everybody. Not very few of them drive nice cars, but we did catch up. We, we stopped off at services and there was a guy there with a very rare speedster in like mint green. And he'd bought pretty much every other Porsche to be able to get that allocation. He had GT3 RSs, and he's also got a Dakar allocation as well, which is pretty cool. So you meet all different types of people, and he was a German businessman, very well spoken, very well dressed, and obviously his car was absolutely stunning. So you meet a very eclectic range of people on these sort of tours, on these driving events. So, so yeah, a very interesting event, very, very cool. And uh, we're just gonna catch up with the other 458 now and uh, keep in the slow lane so that we can let the 812 catch up with us. degrees outside it's just too hot to have the roof down I've got sun cream on everything else but it's just brutally hot uh, for an English person in these temperatures with the roof down you're gonna get potential um, skin cancer etc so you've got to be careful so we've got a roof up aircon full-on and we're just driving comfortably um, and it's a lot more comfortable than having the roof down uh, which is quite bizarre really. you think you'd, with, um, with a spider you'd want the roof down all the time but you know, that's how it is and we're on the motorway. These are long protracted sections of motorway that we're on now to drive it to get into Le Mans. Um, as I detailed earlier, we're around 280 miles that we're driving today to get into Le Mans, to get to our chateau at Le Mans, uh, which is overall gonna take us four and a half hours end to end. Uh, we've got, I think, around another 140 odd clicks, um, kilometers in effect on this section of motorway. So we've still got quite a distance to go yet. Um, and we're not bringing you much footage of the. We got some. We'll have. We'll provide. We're providing you some B-roll, some, some uh, footage that we're overlaying over what we're doing on the motorway. But in general, we're not giving you any protracted, extended sections because it's just bloody boring. You know, we just. It's just motorway driving. The only thing that's interesting is how the French are driving up your ass all the time. But at least we've got the power to get away from them. Now we're just on the last stages into Le Mans. We've come off the motorway. And we're down the side roads into Le Mans and to, well, actually into where our chateau is. So our chateau is fairly rural, but it's quite close, obviously, still to Le Mans. So we'll be getting, one of the guys is bringing that 4x4, so we'll be taking that 4x4 into close proximity to Le Mans. And then we will, we'll be walking in from there. So we won't be taking the supercars up to Le Mans. The supercars will be um, securely parked at our chateau. So this is our home for the next three days, guys. This is the chateau where we're staying. So as you can probably 
probably Gavo, we're here at Le Mans. This is 2023 Le Mans, so this is a centenary year. This is a very important year. Oh, hopefully you can hear me, guys. So far, we've had multiple crashes. We've had a bit of a rainstorm, uh, which has caused people that the cars are on slicks. So of course, they've had accidents because they've been on slicks. And I think it's there's pretty much been a record amount of safety cars because of the accident, so it's quite an interesting year. It's really an epic year for Le Mans. An important thing to note about the centenary year is that this is Ferrari's first first return to form for a circa 50 years, and they're, they're currently running they're currently running around third and fourth, so they're doing really well. Of course, there's a long time to go yet. There's still another I don't know circa 16, 20 hours to go yet, about 20 odd hours to go yet. So. Um, it's quite a long way to go, yeah, and this is a war of attrition on these cars because it's all about reliability and, of course, performance, but the key thing is reliability with that performance, and that's what sets the good brands and good manufacturers apart from the weak. So I'll hand you over to the cars. Seven hours in at Le Mans, and now we're night racing. We've got 17 hours to go yet. Hopefully, you can hear me okay. You can see. I believe Ferrari are still very high up in the rankings at the moment, even maybe still one and two, because recently they were one and two. Not sure of the rankings just recently, but they're very high up and they're doing exceptionally well, so let's keep our fingers crossed for up.
here in the daytime at Le Mans. We've been here all night, so, you'll, so we catch some great footage for you overnight. Um, you do what you've got to do, so we just slept by the track on some grass sections. Um, you know, that's, that's what works out, and that's what you've got to do when you're at these, these events. Because if we went back to our, to our chateau and then came back again, you lose about four hours, and you lose the night shift in effect. So we stayed here all night just so we could capture some footage for you. There's been about 17 and a half hours of racing now, and we've got about six, six and a half hours to go. We're not going to be able to be here to see the closeout of the event because if we do that, then we're not going to be able to get out of the complex. Because, because exit, in, exit in Le Mans is hell. So we'll, so we'll try and cover you off a bit of that at the very end. But we're just going to close out the actual racing from this stage here now. So we've got about six, six and a half hours left. Ferrari are doing very, very well. We're really hopeful that they're going to win, but we'll, we'll provide you the end conclusion later on. So we're closing out a video, guys, from the beautiful chateau that we've rented. Pretty cool, eh? We leased this for three days, so it's been a pretty cool place for us to stay, although we've only been here for actually one day, full end, end to end. Now, Ferrari came first and fifth, Toyota second. The reason why Ferrari came fifth was because they had a spin out. So that caused them to, to drop back from the second position where they were in, in the leaderboard previously. Um, we nearly actually lost the lead, when I say we, Ferrari. Um, because in the pits the car was stalled and the driver didn't know how to actually restart it or use the proper restart mechanism but they did get it started in the end within the contingency in effect the lead that they had between them and Toyota and Ferrari won. Fantastic result, absolutely fantastic. So really, really pleased about that result. And we can say we were there on centenary year at Le Mans, the year that Ferrari won. The first win that they've had or the first placement that they had in 58 years hell of a hell of a coincidence and very very fortunate that we were there for that win if you enjoyed the video make sure you give a thumbs up to the video make sure you give it a like very very important for the channel if you're not subscribed please think about subscribing it's free to do so it doesn't cost you anything and you can unsubscribe anytime you want and guys we have around 94 percent of our viewers that aren't subscribed so it'd be really really good if we can convert some of you to subscribers it is, is truly important to the channel to move the channel forward we need you guys to subscribe please thanks a lot for watching guys and we'll catch you in the next video video.